Hello, English 11 students, and welcome to the quarter three, week one, day two video. This video is designed for those students who were absent from our live Zoom class. If you go to our modules for this week, you'll see the item that says week one notebook time assignment. You're going to need to have that open. As a reminder, everything you say, do, or type is recorded, so please keep it school appropriate. And as always, there's no saving, downloading, or taking pictures of our class ever. Today's agenda. We're going to work on notebook, uh, sorry, week one notebook time activity, which will start with the review of the structure of notebook time activities and then introduce the slightly new format for this week using the mini lesson. So from the English 11B homepage, please click on this week's dates. On day two, you should see the item that says week one notebook time activity, and please go ahead and have that open. All right, if you look at the directions, all right, you're gonna follow along with this video as I review the material in the See, Think, Wonder box, right? Then you're gonna to respond to these focus questions in the My Response box. You'll notice that the directions tell you to answer all four, excuse me, all four of these questions. Okay, and there's a spot for each answer. So I'm gonna go through uh, this video. This video is uh, hyperlinked in that, in the document itself as well. Um, there's a link to the visual text that I'm gonna ask you to look at as well as sample responses. When you click on the sample response, it'll take you to the bookmark at the bottom of the page where you can see some of the sample uh, answers that I've put in there, okay? First, the name of our lesson is called Ah, I See, A Lesson in Close Looking, Part 1. This lesson was adapted from a lesson created by Miss Anderson Petty. By the end of this lesson, learners will be able to identify and explain steps for close looking, close look at a visual text, and then apply close looking skills to a written text. Part 1. What is close looking? So again, we'll come back to this part of your notebook time activity as we do this. So how will today's lesson work? Mr. Cross will present in full screen. I will then ask students to answer questions about a picture that I provide for them. The students will unmute and offer their answers. If you're unable to unmute, you can type your answer in the chat and Ms. Deal will read your answers aloud. We all work together to make the assignment easier and faster. If you're watching this video because you were absent from class, you'll be prompted to pause the video at certain points and do the material on your own. So first, this is the picture we're going to be working with. This may look a little blurry on your screen now, but if you pause the video and go back to the notebook time activity, sorry, Right. If you click on this link here, it says visual text, it'll present you with the larger and clearer picture. Okay, so now that you've taken a look at the picture, right, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, answer the questions, right? What do you see? What do you think about what you see? What do you wonder? And we'll answer that question after you get some more background information about the artist and the picture. And what connections can you make between yourself and this picture? Again, after we give you a little more background information. Let's do the first part. What do you see? On your sheet, you'll notice that there's a spot for you to answer this question right here next to number one. Please pause the video here and just list the various things that you see in the picture. What, do, what are those things doing? What does it look like to you? All right, next. You're gonna answer the question, what do you think about what you see? Right, there's a spot for that answer to go here, right? Do the things you see in the picture make you feel positive, negative? Do they remind you of other things? Do you think, you know, do you, does your mind immediately start asking certain questions about the picture or about the artist? What are those questions, right? What are those thoughts that just immediately pop into your head when you see this picture? Please pause the video here and answer question number two. Okay. So a little bit of background on the artist. Alex Rockman, born in 1980, sorry, 1962, uh, has been depicting the natural world for more than two decades. 
Rockman spent his childhood exploring the halls of the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, where he developed an early passion for the natural sciences. By natural world, we're talking about he liked to draw landscapes with animals uh, in nature. Some background on the artwork itself, or the picture itself. The exacting detail of each animal helps the image seem more real. He went to great lengths to make each animal look authentic. The space depicted in the artwork is rather shallow, very like the dioramas behind glass that you might see at a museum. Alexis Rockman called this painting or this work Manifest Destiny. Manifest Destiny is an idea that originated during the westward expansion of the 1840s through the 1860s. It was the belief that God wanted America to stretch from the East Coast to the West Coast. Going back to our assignment. Now let's discuss what we wonder. What is something you wonder about the artist's choice to call this image Manifest Destiny? What do you wonder about the message that the artist may be trying to convey in this picture? Your answer to number three, what do you wonder, can be either a statement, like an answer to one of these two questions, or it could be your own question about what you wonder. What would you like to know more about? Please pause the video here and answer the question now. Okay. Now, let's discuss what, how we connect. What is something in the picture that reminds you of something else that you've seen before? What is something happening in the real world that you can connect to this picture? Your answer will go here next to number four. Please pause the video here and answer the question. Okay. That was it. You did it, right? But do you know what exactly you just did? You practiced a set of skills that you already use every single day called close looking. Our goal is to make this kind of thinking a habit that we instinctively use to build understanding so that you can think and work more independently. See, right? When we say, I want you to see something, I want you to engage with curiosity, carefully using your five senses, right? What do you see? What do you taste, touch, hear, smell? Obviously, I don't mean these things literally, right? But what are the kinds of things, what are the senses that are being stimulated and how might those be important? Make an inventory of your observations, right? An inventory is like a list. Ooh, excuse me. For example, in Rockman's painting, Manifest Destiny, some of you said that you saw what looked like a broken bridge right here. Some of you mentioned that you saw an oil barrel, this part over here. And other people kind of mentioned like the overgrown vines, maybe this jellyfish, right? Or like this really weird bridge thing that kind of goes underwater and then comes out of the water over here. Think. This is where you make inferences about your observations, right? Educated guesses. And you back up your educated guesses or your interpretations with reasoning. In Rockman's painting, Manifest Destiny, some of you said that you thought that the destroyed bridge was the Brooklyn Bridge and that the city that's here underwater was New York City. And a lot of you said that you thought that because when we looked at the information about the author, we know that he came from, excuse me, from the artist, we know that he came from New York, right? And spent a lot of time there. So it would make sense that that would be where he would paint. Wonder. Consider what questions we are left with or what questions are left unanswered. In the painting Manifest Destiny, some of you said that you wondered if it was global warming that caused the city to be submerged underwater. Some of you wondered if uh, Rockman was trying to warn us about how ignoring climate change could destroy the earth and us. 
connect. What connection can you make to yourself? What connections can you make to the world? And what connections can you make to something else that's related? For example, in Rockman's painting, Manifest Destiny, some of you made connections to how you've seen climate change in your own lifetime, right? With milder winters and way more insects in the spring and summer. Some of you said that you could connect the city uh, underwater, right, to the floods that happened in New Orleans or the drought and the wildfires in California, right, and other forms of climate change. Some of you made connections to biblical story of Noah's Ark because of how this part of the bridge or whatever the structure is kind of looks. Now let's check out how to use this in written texts using part two of your notebook time activity. So if you scroll down, you'll see that part two is set up very similarly, right? Where we're gonna answer this question, how can we use close looking when reading a written text? Good readers practice close looking at a text by seeing, thinking, wondering, and connecting. Some background on Between the World and Me by ta Coates. We all read an excerpt from uh, ta Coates' book earlier this year, but a little bit of background information to refresh your memory. ta Coates is a journalist, novelist, and social critic whose words hold up a mirror to reflect America. Between the World and Me is Coates' letter to his 15-year-old son following the outcome of the Trayvon Martin murder case where the neighborhood watch coordinator, George Zimmerman, age 28, argued that he was standing his ground and received no punishment for murdering Trayvon Martin, age 17. The Martin case and countless others inspired Coates to share his understanding of what it was, sorry, what it means to be in a racialized caste system where people like him are considered to be an often hated and reviled subordinate caste. If you click on the hyperlink on the left-hand side, it'll take you to the excerpt, or you can simply read from the, your screen here. As we read through this excerpt, we're gonna return to our questions. What do we see? What do we think about what we see? What do we wonder? And what connections can we make? Let's read the excerpt together now. But the laws of the schools were aimed at something distant and vague. What did it mean to, as our elders told us, grow up and be somebody? And what precisely did this have to do with an education rendered as rote discipline? To be educated in my Baltimore mostly meant always packing an extra number two pencil and working quietly. Educated children walked in single file on the right side of the hallway, raised their hands to use the lavatory, and carried the lavatory pass when en route. Educated children never offered excuses, certainly not childhood itself. The world had no time for the childhoods of black boys and girls. How could the schools? Algebra, biology, and English were not subjects so much as opportunities to better discipline the body, to practice writing between the lines, copying the directions legibly memorizing theorems extracted from the world they were created to represent. All of it felt so distant to me. I remember sitting in my seventh grade French class and not having any idea why I was there. I did not know any French people, and nothing around me suggested I ever would. France was a rock rotating in another galaxy, around another sun, in another sky that I would never cross. Why precisely was I sitting in this classroom? So as good readers, we see what's happening in the text with our mind's eye, right? Like a mental movie. We have curiosity about what we're reading. We pay attention to what is happening in the text that appeals to our five senses, right? What's being described, what we see, what do things taste like? How do they feel? What do they sound like? Or how do they smell? We make a mental inventory of our observations, right? What are all the things, like a list of things that we have noticed? 
and we identify words, phrases, and sentences that seem interesting or powerful to us. So let's do that now. It's your turn. At this point, you have three questions uh, under the C uh, questions possibility. You don't answer all three, you just choose one to respond to. Your first option, what do you see with your mind's eye? What is happening in your mental movie while you read that excerpt? Which of the five sentences, sorry, which of the five senses, see, taste, touch, hear, and smell, are being stimulated and why? Are those things positive or negative? And your third option, what words, phrases, sentences, etc., seem interesting or powerful to you and why? Please pause the video here and select one of those three questions to answer where it says C answer on your capture sheet. Okay. So some examples, right? This pass these are my answers. Um, the passage is about school, right? And I see so many references to the body, but nothing about the mind. There's nothing about becoming a smarter person in here. It's all about kind of disciplining the body. Some words that stuck out to me, right, are distant and vague, right? These are both two negative words. A phrase, right? Education rendered as rote discipline. Rote means something you do over and over without really thinking about it. And I thought this was an interesting phrase because we shouldn't be thinking of discipline, right? Punishing somebody as part of education, right? This is like supposed to be the last resort. And yet in this excerpt, it doesn't seem like it is a last resort. Like everything is about being disciplined. And then sentences. The world had no time for child's childhoods of black boys and black girls. And then France was a rock rotating in another galaxy, one that he would never cross. These kind of stuck out to me, right? As being very specific to his experience and kind of alarming and depressing in some ways. Think. As good readers, we think about what is happening in the text. We consider why certain words, phrases, and sentences seem interesting and powerful to us. We make inferences about our observations, right? To make an inference, we use what we know to make a guess about what you didn't know, or in other words, read between the lines. Readers who make inferences use the clues in the text along with their own experiences to help them figure out what's not said in the text directly, making the text personal and memorable. And then you can back up your interpretations with reasoning. Again, you'll notice for the think questions, you have three options. You don't answer all three questions. You select one that you would like to answer. Let's take a look at them now. Your first option, what words, phrases, and sentences seem interesting and or powerful to you and why? What inferences or what educated guesses about the text can you make? You're only looking at three paragraphs from the entire story, but what else could you guess about this book? And what clues in the text help you figure out what is not directly said in the text? Please select one of these questions to answer now. Pause the video and answer that question. Okay. Some of my answers, right? So bringing pencils, working quietly, writing between the lines, raising hands, carrying your hall pass, etc. These are all his examples of rote dis uh, discipline, right? I think the experience of school that he had sounds more like being in the military or more like being in a jail than actual school. Um, the words distant and vague, again, we talked about those are opposites of what learning should be like, right? We want to feel like we are close and we want to feel like we have specific answers, not vague answers. Um, this just sounds mad, boring, right? Education as rote discipline. And then the sentences that we talked about from before, right? The world has no time, right? Schools of all places should have time for children. They are teaching kids after all, right? This is something that everybody should be doing, regardless of their skin color, etc. 
And then the France example, right? It must feel like an incredible waste of time to be forced to study something that they don't, that he felt had no connection to him and has no way of helping him. Wonder. As good readers, we wonder about what's happening in the text. We consider what questions we are left with. Again, you have three options, right? What are some questions that you have about the text? What does the author hint at, but not say directly? And then why might the author do that? A second option. What words in the text do you not know? And how might they be important? What is one thing you wish the author gave more information about and why? Please pause the video here and select one of those three questions to answer in the wonder answer section. Okay. So some things that I wonder, I wonder why discipline and not creativity is so important in his school. I wonder how any child manages to grow their brain with so much emphasis on controlling their bodies. I wonder if the schools intended to be racist or if none of the teachers were smart enough to see the problem. And I wonder why the school put so much emphasis on learning French if many of the students weren't going to France or another French speaking country. As good readers, we connect to what is happening in the text. We make connections to ourselves, to the world, and to other texts. What connections can you make between this excerpt and yourself or your own school experiences? How can you connect ta Coates's experience to the world today? And what is another text that this excerpt reminds you of and why? Again, you pick one of those three questions to answer and answer it next to the connect section. Please pause the video here and do that now. Okay. My connections, right? I can connect the strict discipline that he talks about in his passage to an urban school in PG County where kids had to walk in lines and stop at every corner, otherwise they would get detention. I can connect to the opposite experience of school. Uh, when I moved, when my family moved to our own place, we played, we made things, we were creative and we encouraged, we were encouraged to share our opinions and perspectives in class. My experience was like nothing like this one. And I can connect to the equity issues in Maryland schools right now. There are too many schools that still look like this horrible jail-like school that Coates describes. And that's it, you did it, right? You practice close looking at a written text. As a good reader, you saw words, phrases, and sentences that seemed interesting and powerful to you. You thought about why those words, phrases, and sentences seemed powerful to you. You made inferences about your observations and you backed them up with reasoning. You wondered and considered questions you were left with, and you connected the text to yourself, to the world, and to other texts. Thank you for your hard work today. Please make sure that you turn in today's work before 3 p.m. on Saturday. If you need help, student support is available from 2.45 to 3.15. Thank you again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in class soon.